Sometimes only a very old form of communication will do, like hanging up a very big sign outside the New York Stock Exchange or ringing an old mechanical bell. But Snap's valuation, if it's based on anything, is based on the idea that as a species we've moved into a new era of communication. You might think this is a rather grand claim for a company that began as a way for people to send sexually explicit messages to each other that would then self-destruct, but according to the glitzy company video prepared to tempt people to buy their shares... Snap is a camera company. We feel like we're really at the beginning of what cameras can do. Now, you know, cameras augment the way that we talk. Snap's thesis is that keyboards are over and that the cameras in our phones have replaced them as our preferred messaging input device. It's clear that plenty of investors are buying that idea and Snap's shares. Well, I think that the market um, is, is moving more towards images and pictures than text. And we see this in everything. We see this in our business as a move from writing documents to PowerPoints. I think you see this in the dating industry where you know, a lot of people used to be online with Match.com and now everyone's moved to Tinder and, and Happen and things like this. And also I think when, when you have new technologies like AR and VR coming out where through um, you know, the eye you can actually interact with products rather than reading a magazine, I think this is definitely the trend going forward. The founders will have no doubt been pleased with their day's work, the Snap share price up nearly 50% at one stage, but perhaps another sort of bell should be ringing about the fact that the rise in Snap's daily active users has slowed in recent quarters. I'm sceptical. I, I see it rather like a cargo cult. There are VCs, there are an investment community which wants to see the, the great days of the dot-com era. Essentially the function that Snap is performing is, is a messenger boy. It's carrying bits of messages from one person to another. And historically we've never put much value on that. I think this is why it presents itself as a camera company even though it isn't really. If we look at old new forms of communication, although they were revolutionary, they were also very easily copied. Think of typewriters. Think of email. Although Snap, from its beachfront HQ in California, has users, how loyal are they? And how easily might they be tempted away by the next big messaging app? I can see it being big, just like Facebook is big, but Facebook in the bigger picture doesn't generate a lot of revenue and you could argue it destroys other revenue creating industries that we value as well. Uh, historically the telephone network simply carried messages between people and that's what Facebook does, it's almost like a white distribution network of white fans. It's important but it's not essential and I think maybe if we're living in a bubble era um, we might look back and think that this was another era where companies were overvalued. Snap has launched its own camera, although not yet available in the UK. It's built into its own pair of spectacles. The visual image it believes is not just its future, but the future of social media itself. And it's true that other text-based apps like Twitter have struggled recently. If you look at Facebook, it's all about uh, pictures and videos. It's, people are not writing two-page text documents there. And that, say, Facebook is a company that's you know, less than 10 years old. It's worth close to $300 billion. And that is because people are spending a lot of time on Facebook and interacting with people and, 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 and putting up a lot of data, et cetera. So I think Snapchat is no different. Uh, it's just a different demographic. Since Google set the gold standard for tech IPOs, they have been a mixed bunch. Some up hugely, others rapidly losing their wings. Long term, we don't yet know whether Snap will crackle or pop. <laughs>